Today we're going to be talking about Newton's third law. Now just before we get started I have a multiple choice question for you. So please pause this video and attempt the question. So now that you have chosen which one of these statements is true, let's go through the answers. So statement A, there will be a force acting only on the smaller object. This is, I'm afraid, false. So uh, I'm going to put a little cross over here. The reason for that is if both of those objects are in a head-on collision, there is going to be a force acting on both of those objects. Uh, statement B, the resultant force acting on each object will be zero as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Well, this is actually not true again. The reason why it's not true, uh, let's give uh, a label to all of those objects. So let's say that the first one is object A and let's say that this one here is object B. Now, Newton's third law, as we're about to formalize this law, actually says that when two objects interact, they experience equal and opposite forces on each other. So that means that object A is going to experience a force F, like so, and this force F is due to object B. And uh, object B is going to experience the same force, but in the opposite direction, like so, and this force is going to be uh, due to object A. Now notice that this vector over here is just the direction vector. It's a velocity vector. It is not a, uh, it's not a force vector. So should even probably remove it. So when they are actually interacting, there will only be one force acting on each of those objects and that force is going to be exactly the same. So the force uh, or due to object B is going to be exactly the same as the force due to object A, but will be in the opposite direction, excuse me, which is represented by this minus sign over here. Let's have a look at C. Each object will experience a different force depending on its mass. Well, we have just answered that really. Uh, each object will experience exactly the same force in magnitude, but it will be different in direction only. So uh, each object will experience the same magnitude of a force. And finally, D, each object will experience a force with the same magnitude but opposite in direction. This is exactly what we have just said. So D has got to be the correct answer. This brings us to the definition of Newton's third law. So Newton's third law uh, says that when two objects interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. It's quite useful just remembering this diagram. For example, if we have a collision between two objects, object A and object B, object A is going to experience a force due to object B, and object B is going to experience a force due to object A. And FB is going to be minus FA. This minus sign indicates that the two forces are in opposite direction. There are many different examples of, um, of Newton's third law. For example, if you are sitting on a desk right now, if you just press your hand, not too hard of course, but if you just press your hand on the desk, you're going to feel the desk pushing back at you. And this is an example of an interaction between uh, two objects, which is your, which are yourself and the desk, and they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. I mean, something as mundane as walking is only possible due to, uh, due to Newton's third law. The reason why we can go up and also forward is because we push the ground so in order to walk we have to push down with our feet and in turn the ground pushes back at us allowing us to actually walk there are many different examples of newton's third law what other examples can you think of please leave your answers in the comments down below. If there are any questions about Newton's third law, uh, once again, feel free to include them. And yeah, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video.